Test, testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two. Testing one, two.
Well, good morning. Good morning. Everyone doing well? Terrific. We begin our service this morning with our mission statement. As a community gathered by God's great grace, we seek to live our mission of being, living as, and making disciples of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, welcome to Bethany this day. We're glad you're here, both in person or online with us today. And on behalf of the congregation, a special welcome to our guests and visitors on this Independence Weekend. I want to highlight a few announcements today. And while I do that, uh, if you haven't had a chance to sign that black attendance pad in the pew, please take an opportunity to do that. And if you're watching online, please click the link and let us know that you're worshiping with us today. Pastor Kevin is on vacation yet. He'll be back on Tuesday, so please continue to remember them in your prayers for a, a good, relaxing vacation, despite all the bumps they've had. If you read their, his Facebook page, you know. Uh, our high school youth and their sponsors are returning today from their mission trip. They were at the Cheyenne River Reservation in South Dakota. There's a long drive there and a long drive back. So they're well on their way, should be getting in later today. And again, you can go to Bethany's Facebook page and see some of the projects that they've been doing while they were there. The new devotion books, daily devotions, are out in the entry area here. They go from July through September, and it's, if you haven't used those before, they're just a nice prayer to begin, a short devotion, a scripture passages, and uh, use one to take home, or maybe you have a neighbor or friend who you think would like to have one, take one along and gift it to them. A reminder also that there in that area is a table with uh, lost and found items, if you or your children or your grandchildren may have lost something, please check there today because after today, those will all be going to places to be given away. And while day camp will happen later this month, we are starting to collect snacks in advance. So please take a look in your bulletin for the list. Uh, if you'd like to be able to bring some of those, that way we'll be ready when day camp gets here. And if you or you know of someone has a bookkeeping background, uh, we are going to be looking for someone to fulfill that role here at Bethany. Uh, there will be, it is already live on the website, but it'll be on the Facebook page, and there'll be an ad in the newspaper this week looking for someone for that position. So again, if you might be interested or know of someone who has those gifts, please encourage them to apply. And as you might expect, both the church offices and Bethany Preschool will be ch closed tomorrow for a 4th of July holiday, and we hope that you will have a wonderful holiday as well. But I invite you to stand now for our Independence Day litany. Listen, you nations of the world. Announce it from coast to coast. The earth is the Lord's. God rules over all the nations. The Lord reigns forever and ever. It is better to shelter in the Lord. O Lord, be gracious to us and bless us. May the Spirit of Jesus lead us in justice and freedom. We sing. Amen. And as we continue with worship, we'll sing this next song called Prince of Peace. And as we do, you'll notice there's a men's and women's part. The men will, men will lead and the women will echo. And then we get to the refrain and we'll sing different things at the same time. You'll catch on. It's pretty easy. This one's called Prince of Peace. Please join us.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you moved in the lives of the disciples, move in our lives, inviting us to journey to unknown territory, to listen for your voice and to speak your prophetic word in a world that does not want to hear. Empowered by your spirit, grant us the courage we need to journey, trust, listen, speak, and accept your commission to be your faithful servants. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 66. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your glory that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for humankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. Word of God, word of life. And a reading from the New Testament, the book of Galatians chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, we have, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Word of God, word of life, and it's time for children's sermon. Please go over here to Mr. Carl. Go over there. Go over there <laughs> to, to Mr. Carl. Thank you, Pastor Ray. And now you get to go to the other service. Good morning, girls and a few boys. How are y'all today? Good. Well, you're going to get lucky because I got some snacks for you after a while. You just heard Pastor Ray mention the word go, right? We're going to talk about that word. It's a little bitty word, but if you go combine it with some other words, it means a lot. Does anybody ever tell you to go, go somewhere, go something, go do something? It's what I call an action word because you combine it like let's go to church or Pastor Ray, you go to the other sermon. Anybody, your mama ever tell you to go and do something? Go and clean up your room, go and brush your teeth, go take a bath, go away, you're bothering me. <laughs> your parents say it too, you know, I have to go to work, I have to go to the store, 
you have to go to the doctor, all kinds of things. But it means action. Something is going to happen, right? Yeah. And we find that in church a lot, too. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we heard Miss Deanna say at camp, their theme was ready, set, go. Now, what do you think of when you, somebody says ready, set, go? Any ideas? What do you think of when you, somebody says ready, set, go? Go. You, maybe you're going to have a race, ready, set, go. Maybe you're going to have a race, but it means you're going to do something when somebody says the word go, right? And we also, uh, we have sing a song quite frequently, ending one, two, three, four, go. That means we're going to go from here and go do something. Of course, go to lunch maybe, go visit grandma and grandpa maybe, and maybe it means something else too. Uh, during the uh, reading of the gospel later on today, uh, the word go is mentioned in there as well, where Jesus picks out 72 of his disciples and he sends them out ahead of him, and he says, go and get things ready for me, basically. He wants them to prepare the way so the people know that Jesus is coming. So it, it's a good action word. I mean, Jesus even used it. And then here, a lot of times we close with the closing, go in peace and serve the Lord. And what does that mean exactly, go in peace? I think that means that we just need to remember that God is always going to be with us. So we remember that, and if we have a hard day or a hard week, we can remember that God is with us, and he'll be with us, and he'll help us get over things. And then the other part, serve the Lord. That's go and serve the Lord. What does that mean? Any ideas? You know, what we started the ser service with, uh, Pastor Ray, that is our mission statement. Being, living as, and making disciples of Jesus Christ. I think what this term, serve the Lord, means, let's go and make disciples of Jesus. And how do we do that? How can you make disciples of Jesus? How can you spread the word? That's basically what it means. How can you do that? Any ideas? By helping people? Yeah, at your age, you can't really talk to them a whole lot about it, but you can act like a Christian. And what does that mean? It means behave at home, share at school, help others at school, maybe pick up the, your room when Mama wants you to, or take out the trash or feed the dog. But it means act like a Christian, act like somebody who loves everybody else. And then those people can see what it's like to be a Christian and maybe... Later on, when you get a little older, or maybe some of you already can, ask somebody to come to Sunday school or church with you so they can see what we do here as Christians. And as you get older, parents and stuff like that, you can talk to others about Jesus and about God and about helping and loving other people. So those are things you can even do as a young Christian to make disciples of Jesus. But you have to go and do it, okay? You have to do it. All right, let's please uh, bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for having your son go down to earth and to give his life for us. Help us remember that he will and you will always be with us and help us to go and make disciples by being a good young Christian. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for coming up, and we do have some snacks, and I've got too many, so you can even take two if you like. And if you want one more after church, you can hit me up again, okay? And as the children make their way back to their seats, just another reminder to please fill out the attendance pad on each child just to help us know who worshiped with us. We'll continue with our worship.
Let us join with Christians throughout the world in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray now for the church the world, and those in need. I'll end each petition, Lord, in your mercy. I'll invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. We'll start with our prayer song. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son into the world to save and redeem it. This is such good news. May its goodness inspire us to go now into the world and share it with as many people as we can in ways both great and small. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for your call to go into our communities to share the gospel. We know all around us there are those who have not heard the good news, who do not understand the good news, who even reject the good news. May we, we remain undaunted by the challenges we face, and we, may we seek every avenue possible to fulfill the mission you have given us to be, live as, and make disciples of Jesus Christ. We ask that your spirit of mission and witness rest on all churches in Gillespie County, especially our Church of the Week, Fredericksburg United Methodist Church and Pastor George Lumpkin and his wife Brenda. Lord, in your mercy, God of creation, you bring order out of chaos and hope from despair. We pray that you may work to bring order into the chaos of our lives especially in the lives of those who are concerned that they may not have enough income to pay their bills in the midst of soaring prices, especially in the lives of parents who cannot find formula to feed their children, especially in the lives of those who are dependent upon the produce of the land in the midst of our current drought. Increase their and our trust in you that you will bring everything towards the good for those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, generous Father, we thank you for our nation, the United States of America. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, 
reunited, that we may become a beacon of hope throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our high school youth and sponsors as they return from their South Dakota mission trip and for all travelers in their vacation season. We pray for those who mourn, especially for Sandy Swearingen and family at the death of her sister, Melissa Schneider, for Florine Bruins at the death of her sister, Elizabeth Sublett, Pastor Bill Heath at the death of his sister, Bertha Hill, and for the families of the 53 migrants who died this week. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the sick, the hospitalized, those facing surgery, treatments, tests, and disease, for those recovering, especially for Carol and Donald Eckhart, Carolyn Grossenbacher, Audrey Gold, Walt Grinke, for Jason Holland, Kenner Joy Kramer, Raynette Keeneman, James Yensky, Ralph Rohde, for Gerald Smith, Don and Diana Blount, September Vanderstoel, Liz Tynan, Charlie Masters, and those we lift up silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Lastly, remember those who are celebrating times of joy and celebration, that your grace will make those times more vibrant and sweeter for those with anniversaries, birthdays, weddings, healings, reunions, and all we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. these things and whatever else you see we need we ask you to grant us in the name of your son jesus christ our lord who taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Would you sing that with me?
Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, he said, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals. And do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest upon them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed... Eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, Do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Let's be to God. In the 1930s, Roy Plunkett went to work for DuPont's Jackson Laboratory. And on April 6, 1938, Roy was given an assignment and he was working with refrigerator gases. They were trying to to come up with gases that would not kill people or make them sick, which was what was happening with some refrigerators. And anyway, he was working especially with Freon, and Roy and his assistant Jack were, were testing gases under various kinds of conditions, and they made a mistake on one of the procedures. So when they opened the valve of one of the cylinders, it did not discharge like it was supposed to. So for the moment, they simply set it aside and went on with their other work. A little bit later, Roy got to thinking, you know, that cylinder felt heavier than all those other cylinders. And so he thought, I'm going to cut it open. It might explode, but I'm going to cut it open. And so he did. He cut it open. Fortunately, it did not explode, but he found inside this this white substance, a solid white substance, and he wondered what that could be. The more Roy tested this substance, the more surprised he was by it and by its properties. It did not react with other chemicals. In fact, it retained its property to 500 degrees below zero and 400 degrees above zero. Vacuum had no effect, so that meant it could be used. It could be used in space someday. It also refused to stick to anything. Nothing would stick to it. So what was this substance that he discovered? Well, it was polytetrafluorothylene. You try saying that. Which, over the next three or four years, as it became marketable, was called Teflon. And since its discovery, billions of pounds of Teflon have been sold. It's been used to keep the Statue of Liberty from rusting. It's used in cardiac medicine in order to coat the electrical wires. It's used in light bulbs and, of course, in lots of pots and pans because nothing will stick to Teflon. 
Roy Plunkett later admitted that he had been very lucky because it could have exploded in his face and it could have blown up the whole laboratory. But instead, this happened. While he was looking for something, he found something else. Has that ever happened to you? While you're looking for something, you find something else. Some people have come to know Jesus. They have found Jesus in this kind of way. While they were looking for one thing, they found something else. They found somebody. They found Jesus. While looking for happiness, they discovered Jesus. While searching for contentment, they discovered Jesus. While looking for forgiveness or for purpose or for meaning in life or for something else that was burden easing, they found Jesus. How did they find Jesus? Well, because Jesus first found them. That is a major theological point. We don't just find Jesus. Jesus first finds us. Jesus first finds us. When they went looking for something and they weren't real sure what the something was, there was Jesus. He was right there and he was looking them in the eyes. That's what our gospel reading is about this day. I know it's mostly about the 72, the people who go out as witnesses. It's mostly about them, and we're going to get to them in just a moment. But first, you've got to look at those other people, those people who were in the towns, people, people who were in the places and the houses, the offices, the buses and the gyms, wherever those 72 were going to go. Think of those people. The ones the Bible says are in all those towns and places where they were to go. What about them? Jesus says they are a plentiful harvest. He says the harvest is plentiful. And I think what he means by that is that these are people who are in some way ready. They have a readiness about them. They're in a seeking mode. Or maybe they're in a time of need. They're needing encouragement or help or care or compassion. Maybe they are people who have lost their way and they need finding. Maybe they are people who have lost sight of who they are. And maybe they've lost sight of their own abilities and strengths. Maybe they need some direction. Maybe they need a sense of belonging. Maybe they need a sense of purpose or or some cause that they can join in and, and lift up. In other words, they are what you might call ripe for the harvest, and by that I mean they are ready. There is a readiness. They don't know it yet. They don't have a clue who Jesus is, but they will soon. Why? Because of those 72 witnesses. Jesus sends out 72 of disciples. It was was not just the professional team of the 12 apostles, but he sends out 72 people who have been following him. And some are going to reject their witness, no doubt about it. Some will reject their witness to Jesus. But others, they're ready. They're in that state of readiness. They knew Jesus would come. They just didn't know who Jesus would be. They didn't know who would introduce them to Jesus. And they learned from the 72 that the hopes and fears of all the years are met in Jesus. The people were looking for one thing, but they discovered something else. They discovered somebody named Jesus. Jesus has this way of bringing people who know Jesus and people who need Jesus, of bringing them together. It's the working of his Holy Spirit. People who know Jesus come to give good news to the people who are needing Jesus. The word in the New Testament is euangelion. Evangelism is where we get that word. It's telling one person good news that you know. Now, Jesus has instruction for these 72 witnesses. Now, that's where most of us come in. We are the disciples. We are the ones who are going to witness about Jesus, and he has, he has instructions. Go two by two. <laughs> know that somebody's got your back. Also, it gives you a little strength sometimes if you go with somebody else. 
He says, focus on the mission. When you're on a mission, you make haste. Don't just chit-chat about nothing or about the weather or about football, all right? Get to the point. He says, don't take a bunch of stuff with you because then you're going to have to worry about all your stuff. And he says, eat what is offered to you. Don't be picky. Stay with the people who welcome you. Don't go looking around for a fancier house somewhere. Stay, make the relationship, and stick with that relationship. And then Jesus gives them a message to share. This is the message there to share. Number one, bring a word of peace. Number two, bring healing. Healing to the sick, the body sick, the mind sick, the oppression sick, the sin sick. And number three, tell them the good news of the kingdom of God. Tell them the dream for God's world has come near to them in Jesus Christ. Bring peace, bring healing, announce the kingdom come. Those three things. And he says you might be rejected. A lot of chance that you won't be rejected, but I can guarantee you there will be some rejection, he says. It's going to happen. Jesus says, okay, it happens. Don't create a scene. The gospel, after all, it's not an invasion of somebody. You know? You're not invading them. You're not invading their territory. It, it's a message. It's an invitation. It's not a hostile takeover. Maybe some of you have had that experience of someone who's <coughs> evangelizing you, and it feels like they're invading your space or they're, they're hostile. No, nope. he says, just give them the invitation. And if they don't welcome you, well, wipe the dust off your feet to show that you're not there to take their money, you're not there to take anything. You're going to even leave the dust that's on your feet, then wipe it off, leave them with their dust, and then let it go. Let it go. Maybe you've planted a seed. You don't see anything now, but maybe you've planted a seed that the Holy Spirit is going to use in five or ten years. It is, after all, our job to give the message. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to convert, convict, to help people commit to Jesus. And it happens in Jesus' time. And the glory of the mission work, the glory of the evangelism, the euangelion, the glory of that is God's, not ours. We don't rejoice in what we've done, but we rejoice in what God is doing through us. Rejoice, Jesus says. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. On the cross, Jesus wrote our names in heaven. We've talked about a lot of things that the cross means and what happens with the cross. We're forgiven. We're reconciled. We become new creations. We are, we are brought into God's kingdom. We are saved. But here's one more thing. Your names are written in heaven. On the cross, Jesus has written your name in heaven, and he has brought you that gift in the waters of baptism. It's yours. The power is not in the messenger. The power is in the one who sends out the messenger. And that is the joy of the disciples. It says the disciples returned with joy. And their joy is in the strength of Jesus. Their joy is in what Jesus had done through them and worked through them. And not only, not only did they experience bringing peace and bringing healing and announcing the kingdom come, they said even the demons, even evil, submitted in the name of Jesus. And then Jesus has this, this kind of vision, this kind of revelation that he, he shares with them. <clears throat> he says, I saw the Satan, which literally is the accuser. It's a word he takes from the book of Job. Satan was the accuser who stood in God's heavenly court and made accusations against people. And he said, I saw the Satan, the accuser, fall like lightning from heaven. In other words, Jesus sees that as these witnesses go and as they are chasing evil away, he sees more and more that his victory is being spread further out into the world. So we pray that Jesus still to this day will still see the Satan, the accuser, falling with all of his accusations. Only thing is, we wonder sometime. Did the Satan fall into our backyard? 
you know, into our nation. Tomorrow is Independence Day, and it's a day we we celebrate the freedoms, the things that, that we agree upon, the ideals of the country. But we also know that we are a country at this time deeply divided, deeply making accusations against one another. Divisions are running deep. It's fine to have differences of opinion. That's how things get decided and settled. You give your best argument, the other person gives their best argument, maybe a third person steps in. We're so divided by everything that's in the news right now. Views on abortion, gun control, politics, politicians, vaccinations, the border, gender identity. You say one of those things and whoa, things blow right up. Lock of accusations made against one another. Disagreements with bitter divisions. This last week, the governor of Utah spoke a word to both the left and the right. He's more conservative, but he said, i got a word for both of you. Basically, quit seeing each other as evil. Separate opinions from the person. The person who's not in agreement with your opinion is not evil. Quit seeing each other as evil. You wonder sometime with as divided as we are, you wonder if democracy itself is at risk. I actually have seen a couple of articles by really intelligent people within the last month questioning, is democracy, as we've known it, at risk? John Adams was a founding father of the United States. He was also the second president of our nation. And at that time, back in the late 1700s, he warned, he said, remember, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and then murders itself. There was never a democracy yet, John Adams wrote, that did not commit suicide. In other words, the danger for democracy comes from within itself. So tomorrow, tomorrow, fly the flags, shoot off the fireworks. No, we're in a burn band. Don't shoot off the fireworks. But see the parade, listen to music, watch the things at night that go on in D.C., all the things, because those things are meant to lift up again our ideals, our values. They're meant to lift up our nation at its best. And you got to do that every now and then, otherwise you get stuck in thinking of it at its worst. Just remember, no political party has a monopoly on what is good or right. Neither does any nation. After all, Christians live in almost every nation of the world, and in some places they have freedom, and in some places they are murdered or imprisoned for speaking out. But Christians, whatever nation you put your feet in when you get up in the morning, when you crawl out of bed, you put your feet on some nation. To all of us, wherever we may be, Jesus says, go. Child of God with your names written in heaven and your feet feet planted on the earth. Go. Bring peace wherever you go. Bring some kind of healing for folks who are needing healing and announce that the kingdom of God is found in Jesus Christ. Do that because someone looking for something else might just find Jesus. And they might find Jesus in the message that you've brought to them. Amen. Going to invite Agape Road to come forward again and lead us in a song. As they're coming forward, please bow your heads for prayer. Gracious God, you come to us, and there are times when, through others, you open our eyes. We see you again. You were there even before we knew it. And you find us, and we find you. We thank you for those times. We ask that we may be witnesses 
witnesses to the presence of Jesus in this world. We ask that you would help us draw near to him, and in doing so, find that he has already drawn near to us. Let us find joy that our names are written in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all you saints of God. Sing for joy. Closing benediction, uh, just a couple announcements. One, uh, our special offering for this particular month, we do this every month, some special offering, and for this month of July, it is a Bethany Foundation, and you'll hear more about it later this month. Uh, we're grateful for your financial support of Bethany. We don't take up offering using offering plates anymore, but there are offering boxes at the door as you leave. Next week, we will hear a little bit more about our, our preschool building. We had voted to build a couple of years ago, had to postpone. You'll hear some more news about that next week. Please read the article on the back of your bulletin in preparation for that. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please join us with our singing song, Sing and Shout.
thank you for worshiping today. Hope you have a good holiday tomorrow. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with enthusiasm. Thanks be to God, and we will.